Hello, good evening, and welcome to News 365 News Southern Portion. I'm Issa Mone. Coming up, the headlines for tonight. News 360 Headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Paint and Piccadilly Biscuits, My Life Insurance. Tension in our ten crime as farmers in Aguna West Municipality agitate over sale of farmlands to Kwaibibrim Oil Company. Shortage of oil palm affecting production of palm kernel oil at Asamankuma in Ofensu Municipality of the Ashanti region. International news. U.S. Navy docks in Ghanaian waters ahead of visit of Speaker of U.S. Congress Nancy Pelosi. On mission tonight, Class 5 pupils of Okushibri KKMA Basic School still study under a shed in the Tungkatamazu municipality of the Greater Accra region. And around the world, 55 bodies recovered so far off Libyan coast after boat capsized. We have details coming up shortly. Do stay with us. And in our very first story, farmers in Otenkran and eight adjoining communities in the Agona West Municipality of the Central Region are agitating over the sale of farm lands to the Kwabi Brim Oil Company. The company is said to have acquired the lands from the owners to replace the cocoa farms with palm trees, which is alleged to be under the One District, One Factory Initiative. Lucy Ayambela has more. Otenkran and eight adjoining communities are predominantly cocoa farming communities within the Aguna West municipality. Farmers in these communities are crying foul over the sale of farmlands by the landowners to the Kwaibi Brem Oil Company. According to farmers, about 15,000 acres of farmlands have been graded to pave way for nursing and planting of palm trees. They say they feel cheated with the compensation given them by the company. No negotiation, no arrangement, no meeting. Everything came in the form of impose. Yes, from the, our land owners, they came and they said they have sold their land to a Wibri Moyer company. I was about harvesting the cocoa when they came to the farm to grid everything, including cassava planting and cocoa. They gave me 1,000 CDs for my maize farm and 40 CDs for 66 palm trees. Now my family and I are hit by hunger. Meanwhile, the Minister for Gender, Children and Social Protection, who is the Member of Parliament for Aguna West, Cynthia Morrison met with farmers at Otenkrang to calm tempers and assure them of government support. Today is a very sad day, one of the saddest days, because two months ago they called me that we, somebody is coming here to um, put up a factory, one district, one factory, and I told them I haven't heard of it. So quickly I rushed here to see. So when I got there, I'm like, what is this? And they said we're doing, um, they're planting palm nuts or whatever. So I just, um, I asked them, are you put up a factory here? They said no. We are going, we haven't seen it and we're sending it to the eastern region. So I said, I was like, no. I want to see your course. So I gave them my card. I want to see your course. Let's talk about it. Because if your factory is in the eastern region, you can't also deprive our cocoa farmers their livelihood. She donated some food items to the affected farmers who, as a result of the destruction of their food crops, complained of hunger. I have some bags of rice for you. Please share it amongst yourselves. But I'll plead with those of you who were not affected to show some love to the affected ones by being supportive. We gathered that the proposed palm farm will feed the factory, which is in the eastern region. And the U.S. Ambassador to Ghana, Stephanie Sullivan, has reaffirmed the United States' commitment to strengthen partnership with African navies to fight maritime crime. The ambassador was speaking at a ceremony to welcome Carson City, a U.S. naval support ship, to the Tema port. Carson City sailed from Europe to Ghana. The United States naval ship is used as a fast transport vessel in the military lift command. 
She is manned by four military officers with 26 civilian crew on board. The seven out of nine newly built naval ship can also transport 600 tons of military cargo on 1,002 nautical miles. The visit to Ghana is part of the African Partnership Station deployment, which she made a stop at 2nd D for engagement with the Western Naval Command. The two navies exchange knowledge in both maintenance, maritime law and extend medical and outreach services to health institutions in 2nd D. The United States Ambassador to Ghana, Stephanie Sullivan, was hopeful maritime security corporations will be deepened. We formally welcome the USNS Carson City to both Ghana and the Gulf of Guinea, where the crew will continue to conduct maintenance engagements with additional nations in the region and carry out assessments and workshops on best practices. Deputy Minister for Defense, Major Derek Odro, said government is appreciative of several interventions by the U.S. government. For your strong bond of relationship with our Navy and urge the two navies to continue to enhance their collaboration to deal with the increasing insecurity in the Gulf of Guinea, which is a global strategic highway for maritime Commerce. The U.S. Navy ship Carson City is in Ghana as the country prepares to welcome the U.S. Speaker of Congress, Nancy Pelosi. She is the third in command after the U.S. President and his vice. The revelation that the country spent some $4.5 million on this year's African Cup of Nations angered many Ghanaians, and that's our story of the week. And Kwachi Afrenyama has more. Few things unite the nation like football, so naturally matters relating to the country's national soccer team, the Black Stars, would arrest the interest of many Ghanaians. Prior to the 2019 African Cup of Nations, there had been demands for the sports ministry to release a budget for the tournament, but that did not happen. But finally, the sports minister, Isaac Esiama, revealed in parliament on Wednesday that the country spent some $4.5 million on the continental football event. Actual expenditure, Mr. Speaker, an amount of $4 million, $4,352 was expended from the training tour to the time Ghana exited from the main tournament. Providing further breakdown of how the $4.5 million was expended, he indicated the expenditure covered the playing body, technical team, as well as members of parliament. dollars per diem for players, $187,050. Per diem for technical staff, $129,600. Per diem for additional technical staff, $90,750. The disclosure would generate mixed reaction from MPs. The discussion would focus on the future of Black Stars coach Kwesiapia and the details of the budget. The minister and indeed the outfit that is in charge of the Black Stars should come with a definitive pronouncement on the coach. Not leave it in limbo. If it's to be continued, a decision will have to be taken and it will have to be made known to him. If he is to be discontinued, he must be told. The Honorable Minister himself, there was a video that went viral uh, encouraging supporters uh, to uh, go on uh, a sketching more or less. We want these figures at least uh, break down for us to then understand you know, what went into those itemized uh, uh, line items. Those line items, about six of them, including the MPs. And the way it was couched, as if all members of the committee went. Reacting to the statements made by his colleague lawmakers, the sports minister denied allegations that government sponsors supporters to Egypt to go on an excursion. I mean, that is neither here nor there. It was a decision by CAF and FIFA to organize all supporters in all the countries that participated for the discussion. So as a minister, I was briefed by the FA of Ghana, and there was communication 
had with the, with the supporters, I had to communicate to the supporters. So that's all that happened. But in a later interview, former sports minister Nilante Van der Poy said the ministry has more questions to answer. I think we should have a committee to probe further the total budget and expenditure of the ministry. Who gave out this money? Where did they take it from? Is it the fact that some other ministry's money was taken to finance this? Ordinary Ghanaians also had their say. I think it's very, very ridiculous, you know. We, it could have helped in resources like education, health. There should be an inquiry, you know, to set into these kind of stuffs. This have gone that they, they went to. They brought nothing right. So the money they spent it on what? This conversation will not end soon. The sports ministry would have to convince Ghanaians that their taxes were put to good use and indeed justifiably. For TV3 News, Kwache Afreniama. All right, now the Chief of Defense Staff, Lieutenant General Obed Buama Akwa, is urging the media to mobilize public opinion to aid the operations of the security services. He says it is the responsibility of the public to support the security agencies to deal decisively with activities of insurgents. The CDS was addressing the opening session of the 2019 counterinsurgency and jungle warfare exercise at Abenyase in the Eastern Region. wave of terrorist attacks across the globe, especially in the West African sub-region, has been of concern to government and the military high command. The security threat posed by these happenings affects the civilian community, security services and state authorities on the same level. This means a multi-agency and collaborative approach in dealing with the challenge. The media are crucial in mobilizing public opinion locally and internationally to support the operations of the security services. The general public also owes it a duty to complement the efforts of the security agencies by providing us with timely information about the movements and activities of the insurgents to be dealt with decisively. The four-day tri-service counter-insurgency and jungle warfare and competition is a biannual combat readiness exercise for the Ghana Armed Forces. <laughs> the exercise aims at testing platoon-sized sub units drawn from the Army Commands and Formations, Ghana Navy and Ghana Air Force. In jungle skills and crafts, small unit leadership, unit progression, endurance, and inter-service cooperation. It is also to test sub-unit skill in navigation, search and rescue, offensive tactical operations, all target crossing, markmanship, helicopter vectoring, and machining drills. The setting is tailored to sharpen the skills of members of the Ghana Armed Forces in order for them to be combat ready in jungle craft and skills in counterinsurgency to deal with potential threats to the peace and security of Ghana. <laughs> Let's go to the Ashanti region where shortage of oil palm is affecting production of palm kernel oil at Asamankuma in the offensive municipality. Chelsea Ifa Frempa reports few producers still in the business are calling on government to invest in oil palm plantation to resuscitate the sector. The production of palm kernel oil is one of the main sources of employment for most women in the Asamankuma community. Palm kernel oil is one of the extracts from oil palm. The production of palm kernel oil is a tedious one. The palm fruit is first boiled to get the nut. The nut is then cracked to separate the fruit from the shell through winnowing or soaking in water. After the fruit is separated, it is milled and cooked to extract the oil. 
in the abundance of oil palm, not less than 50 women are engaged in the production of palm kennel oil. But due to the shortage of oil palm, only a handful of women are currently in business. The women want government to invest in oil palm plantation to improve access to the tropical crop for their production. We are pleading with the government to support us with the palm kernel oil production. Municipal Chief Executive of Ofenso, Solomon Kesey, says government is already investing in planting of all palm trees in the district. We are assembling nest. 6,500 uh, seedlings and have given to the uh, farmers free of charge to plant. We saw that many people are in need of it, so we decided, the assembly has decided to increase the quantity uh, next year. He noted government under the Planting for Export and Rural Development program is making efforts to maximize oil production to create jobs and wealth in local communities. The oil contains zero cholesterol, unsaturated fat, and rich in vitamin A and K, among others. According to dietitians, this type of oil is healthy and good for consumption. And the lack of a proper delivery bed has compelled authorities of the Abunu Chips compound to use an old hospital bed for deliveries. Beatrice Bugabra reports the improvised delivery bed is too high for women in labor, compelling them to use a kitchen stool as support to mount before the bed. The Chiefs compound serves about 8,000 inhabitants from nine neighboring communities of the Lake Bosom Chain. Residents of Abono are mostly farmers and fishmongers who fry tilapia from the lake for sale. The residents from Abono and the environs rely on the Chiefs compound for their immediate medical needs. The Abono Chiefs compound has two wards for detention, but only three beds are available to serve the purpose. The roof of the labor ward leaks badly any time it rains, resulting in a depressed floor. An improvised delivery bed serves women in labor. To climb the bed for delivery, the women have to step on this kitchen stool placed at the foot of the bed. Midwife in charge of the facility told TV3 two women cannot deliver at the same time because of lack of delivery beds. Assembly member for Abono Electro Area, Stephen Oheneba Afram, wants the chips compound upgraded to a health facility to adequately serve the health needs of the people. We have to at least have a male and a female so that we can help the patients. They said they will come to our aid, but I don't know the actual time they will come. District Chief Executive for Busumche, Joseph Kwesiasuming, acknowledged the challenges facing the Abono Chips compound. He said the Assembly is making efforts to procure a delivery bed for the compound. They asked for some items, including delivery bed and some few equipment, which we are going to purchase for them the next two or three weeks. We intend to upgrade it within the next few months. The Assembly is also in talks with the Ghana Health Service and the Ministry of Health to upgrade the CHIPS compounds with health centre with the needed facilities and equipment to offer quality health care. In other news, Vivo Energy has handed over two borehole facilities to the Shem and Chini community in the Ashanti region. The intervention, which follows an MTN video report aired on TV3, will enable the community to access portable drinking water for the first time. Yam Chini is a farming community in the Mampo municipality of the Ashanti region. The community has a population of 800, with about 60 cottages dotted around, mostly inhabited by Kusasi migrants from the northern region. Access to education and good drinking water are among the major challenges facing the community. This has been the only source of drinking water serving the entire population here until the intervention to provide two boreholes. Citizen journalist Naomi Ayambila first reported the plight of the community on MTN Video Report on March 25, 2019. Two months after, Vivo Energy responded to the community's plight. The company intervened by constructing two hand pump boreholes. 
Managing Director of Evil Energy, Ben Hassan Watara, reiterated the company's commitment to support rural Ghana. He encouraged the community members to make good use of the water facilities. Vivo Energy Ghana was touched when a report on TV3 was aired highlighting the, the plight of this community in our staff CSR challenge. And as a company that is committed to socio-economic advancement of community, we cannot look away while innocent lives are exposed to waterborne diseases through unsafe drinking water. The chief of Yamanchini, Yaba Agurugu, commended Vivo for the gesture. We are extremely grateful for the support. God bless your organization. Mampo Municipal Chief Executive Thomas Apiakubi described the intervention by Vivo Energy as heartwarming. Vivo Energy also presented educational materials to school children in the Yamanchini community. Also touched by the needs of the community, individual staff of the company donated cash and building materials to support educational development in the area, especially in the construction of a dilapidated class 5 and 6 blocks of the Bengro Basic School. Two brilliant children of Yamanchini will also have their education sponsored by two staff of Vivo. All residents of here, my channel will certainly be happy, sir. And thanks to View Energy and TV3. More news coming up. Stay with us. Mission is supported by Star Ghana Foundation with thanks to Danida, UK Aid and the EU. Class 5 pupils of the Okushubri KKMA Basic School study under a shed. While the situation is worrisome because classes are disrupted anytime it rains and pupils and teaching staff want stalled projects in the school completed to address this challenge. When we first got to the Okushibui KKMA Basic School, class 5 pupils were studying under a shed. Then, the weather changed, threatening to rain. The pupils and their teacher had to immediately vacate their makeshift classroom, and classes came to an abrupt end. For over an hour, it rained heavily. And the class five pupils had to perch with other pupils in this classroom. It's now a busy school. We have both primary and GHS, and they are all using the same block. That is six uh, classrooms. So we are even running multi-system because um, we have class one and two in one classroom, class three and four in a classroom, so that it will make room for GHS one and two. And that is why the P5 uh, children are uh, seated under a tree. And you saw what happened. The moment we got there, it started raining and they had to run out of the rain. And even um, one fell down, a dual decks fell on him. So you saw all what happened. But uh, it's a challenge, but we are facing it. Previously, the Okushibri community in the Thun Katamansu municipality of the Greater Accra region was without a school. The Thun Katamansu municipal assembly came in to construct the Okushibri Thun Katamansu municipal assembly basic school to serve pupils of school going age in Okushibri and its environs. Enrollment is now over 300, but there's a little challenge. Some projects, including the kindergarten and junior high school block, have stalled. When completed, it will help decongest the crowded classrooms, while class 5 pupils will no longer study under a shed. We sought answers from the Tunkatamansu Municipal Assembly. We have just completed Okushibri School complete. If you go there, you will know that those schools have been completed fully. And I am intending completing their GSS block to them. And it is part of the contract I'm going to award very soon. Meanwhile, pupils also need the school lavatory completed. 
to prevent them from attending to nature's call and the bush. Let's now go to the Ahafo region and he's smart, talented and very creative. Although he's unable to use his hands effectively, he's braved the odds and tops his class despite his disability. Well, mission brings to you the story of Jonah Mauni Anashuga, who is in dire need of support to undergo medical care and further his education. Today, mission is at Suswaho RC Primary and Kindergarten School in the Dryam Kwanta Municipality of the Ahafo region. We're here to meet a special boy who, despite his disability, has braved the odds to join his colleagues in class. Well, he needs a little support to become someone in future. Yes, I was born like this. Before um, I was sent to school, people, everybody who will see me just look at me. That time, I, I don't come out to go with them or play with children, just like that. So I was at home every time doing artwork and modeling and money chains. When we first met Jonah, he was writing his end of term exams at the Suswaho RC Primary and Kindergarten School. He's unable to use his hands effectively, but slowly he strives to support himself over the years by using both hands, though slowly, to write. But he was almost denied his right to education. I didn't start school early because my father knows, knows that I can't even go to school <coughs> because of my conditions. People tell me if Jonah was their son, they wouldn't have been able to cater for him. When he was born, I felt ashamed to send him to school. A friend called me and encouraged me to give him education. He now tops his class. Yes, sir, yeah. or can come. Thanks to inclusive education, Jonah has joined regular pupils in class who support him in everything he does. <laughs> By dint of hard work, Jonah is topping his class. And he's also good academic both, even all field. He cannot move all the uh, the hands and the legs. For right now, as we are talking, he cannot even walk a distance of um, 10 meters without sitting. We are trying to get means of helping him because the mentor, the mind is actually excellent. You could see that in the school, he's the best student. The mind is excellent, but the future, when you leave him alone to go or stay as a family member, what can he do for himself? The help he is needing, first one, is like we need experts outside to help him. Our environment that we are, we don't know what else to do. So we need experts to come to his aid. The assembly uh, has such a system in place. And uh, we do help the disabled people in the uh, municipality. Uh, not long ago, we, we, we distributed items to the disabled children, especially Jonas is one of those that we distributed uh, the items to. Due to his disability, Jonas' family had to relocate from the north to Dry and Kwanta in the Hafo region to seek medical care for him. 
Jonas' father is a farmer and not financially stable to support his son, but he's benefited from the 3% District Assembly Common Fund for persons with disability for his son. He got three sheep and hopes to sell them to support his son's education. Jonah is also very creative. He currently needs support to undergo treatment as well as to further his education. Someone could help me to undergo a surgery. I will be happy because of my because of the distance between our house and this school. It, is, it seems to be too far. So if they can help me to undergo my surgery so that I will be well and can do that, I will be happy. Akurani sisi ya wanante kwa skuma, watishu ya uhuwa, ubesu. He struggles to walk when going to school. Even the crutches he uses were donated. Ena crutches no, ena ekoye. Eno disa crutches na yadeng. Ama nisi wanfanya ni katakra. Jonah had a message for parents of children with disability. I want to tell them to never give up about this. They they have to look after them. Uh, they have to look for, uh, take care of them and do what they like. When they, I hope God will bless them and give them uh, something that they like or anything they are praying for. Poshigabo, TV3 News, Suswahu, Ahafo region. Jonah needs financial support to continue with his education. And that's it for Mission. Mission is supported by the Star Ghana Foundation with thanks to Danida, UK Aid and the EU. Thanks so much for watching. And now the news tonight, the Member of Parliament for Efutu, Alexander Fenyomakin, says he will continue to fight for the people of Efutu until the right thing is done at the University of Education, Winneba. He stressed that some cities in other countries with universities have used their universities to develop their communities. Hence, same must be seen in Winneba. Alexander Fenyomakin said this when he was pressing a 100,000 Ghana CD check to the when he was presenting a 100 CD Ghana check to the Winneba Mobile Money Merchant Association at Winneba in the central region. Here's a report by Lucy Ayambila. The 100,000 CD check is a seed capital to support members of the Winneba Mobile Money Merchant Association in their business. Member of Parliament for the area, Alexander Fenyomarkin said the gesture is a way of reviving the private sector to improve the socio-economic development of the Efuti constituency. If we don't give you the needed support, we will have nothing and crime rate will go up, will be high. People will be stealing, there's unemployment. In today's Winneba, a lot of people want government to employ them, but government cannot employ everybody. But if we encourage those of you in the private sector, I'm sure you will be a self-made man. He maintained he is committed to the development of the people, thus his efforts to ensure University of Education gets at least 30% of its resources from the community. If you go to UK, United Kingdom, Oxford is a university town. That is their tourism, that is their economy, that is their everything. There's a relationship between the community and the university. If you go to Buckingham University where I was, Buckingham is a small town, but because of the university, there's a new economy in Buckingham. If you go to Bradford, where I again study, Bradford has become Bradford because of the university. So when I'm talking about such issues, I am talking out of experience, and I will do so with passion. In other news, the Esiakwa Salvation Army teacher George Soma, who was lynched by six youth, has been laid to rest at the Esiakwa Methodist Church. The teacher was brutally beaten to death owing to a dispute over snails three years ago. The late teacher had been at his current post for close to two years before his demise. 
Several mourners at the Isiakwa Methodist Church could not hold back their tears during the service. His daughter, in a tribute, described him as the best dad. Wow, such a great man indeed. If all fathers were like you, I bet there would be no pain in this world. With her dark radiated love and warmth, you are truly Miss Daddy and forever remembered. Members of the Ghana National Association of Teachers were emphatic that no teacher should be lynched to death. Words cannot describe how wonderful he was to the entire family. It was indeed very disheartening to accept the sudden departure of a beloved brother, especially when we did not hear of any ailment that affected him. The late teacher left behind a wife and two children. Meanwhile, court proceedings on the murder case would be heard on July 31 at Chibi. And now the Ghana Prison Service will support from the Church of Pentecost is to construct five model camp prisons in prime agricultural areas in the country. The proposed model camp prison will contain modern facilities such as inmates' dormitories, workshops and administration blocks. The Minister of the Interior, Ambrose Derry, made this known at the passing out parade of recruits in intake of uh, 112 officers in Accra. The graduates, numbering 423, are the second of three batches of 1,000 new entrants expected in the Ghana Prison Service. They went through nine months of rigorous training in the academic, practical and regimental fields and will be posted to the various prisons establishments countrywide to beef up security. Minister of the Interior, Ambrose Derry, said government is committed to resourcing the Ghana Prison Service to enable it to effectively deliver on its mandate. It is refreshing to note that the Church of Pentecost has started the construction of the first such model camp prison at Ejira, and that it will be due for commissioning in September this year. I am informed that the second model camp prison at the Insawan Medium Security Prison should commence soon. He added government is addressing the health needs of the prison community. Accordingly, three medical doctors, five registered general nurses, two registered general nurse midwives, 25 nurse assistants clinical, and 12 nurse assistants preventive have been seconded to the Ghana Prison Service. The recruit officers were urged to maintain the highest standards of respect and professional conduct at all times. Awards were presented to some recruit officers who distinguished themselves during the training. And on the wings of that, we take a short break. We will return shortly with some more stories. On Friday night, just got better as Media General Group, owners of TV33 FM, Munya FM, Connect FM, and Adesa Production Limited, has launched a corporate hangout for its cherished viewers and listeners. The corporate grill and chill hangout comes off on the last Friday of every month. Understanding the need for corporate-based relation, the Media General Group has set out an agenda to bring its audience closer. The media conglomerates will treat some viewers and listeners and other corporate bodies to a marathon of non-stop entertainment once every month. So we have set a particular program we call Corporate Grill and Chill, which is to hang out once every month and bring together all our clients, our listeners, some of them, so that we all dance to the music, listen to the music, eat, drink, and discuss things that are mutual to all of us. From the MG Grill and Chill Hangout will serve as a help for corporate individuals to socialize, harmonize, and release stress after a long week. Really for party me, your party me, your beat me. The corporate grill and chill hangout comes off last Friday of the month. Everybody said, I know the world, let me do one again. Hey, I'm still in it. Hey, everybody said, I 
And it was all fun as the Media General Group held a special media get-together and fun games for staff. Palm wine music was served hot by the award-winning band Kwampa. And oh, nothing. I get it. Make a female performed as well. Naftaliba brings us the rest of the story. <laughs> The forecourt of TV3 was a center of attraction as staff and management at Media General came all out to celebrate the media in grand style. The event was to show appreciation to the hard-working staff for their inputs towards the growth of the company. Yeah, for the first half of the year, Media General achieved 72% of our targets. That is great achievement for us and so I think that we need to congratulate ourselves each and every one of you have done very well and you need to be commended. There was plenty to eat and drink, departmental rap battle, dancing and singing competition, water challenge, among other engaging activities, were lined up for the fun packed day. Five. Okay, here we go. The fun continued with the award winning band. Kwampa treating patrons to some live palm wine music as well as some 3FM's finest DJ on rotation. Then, the dance floor was opened to all to show off their dance moves. According to management, more of such events will be held to heighten staff morale. I always said that when you are well entertained, your creativity goes up. And we are supposed to be able to be more creative for our viewers and listeners. The excitement on the faces of staff was beyond description. I wish this thing would be happening every Friday so that, I mean, after hard days of work, I mean, we have this kind of refreshment, you know. So you get to fraternize with, you know, your colleagues. You don't get to do that so often. You're always working. You're always trying to give people the very best. So it means so much. All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. All play and no work makes Jack a little guy. So I think just perfect. We needed this whining now. We needed it so much. After the months, the weeks that we put in bringing out the best in news and being the first in entertainment, I think this is the best time for us to distress to prepare us for the next quarter of the year to give us our best. So I think we are excited and it's good that we are doing this. All work and no play. Mix Jack a dull boy. <laughs> little bit of that and a little bit of this makes mm. life quite yeah. easy. I can't wait for next month's event, Grill and Chill. I guess I got, got to be here too. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it for News 360. Thanks so much for your time. I am Paul Shigabo. And I'm Issa on India with more updates and breaking news. And of course, news around the world on 3news.com.